Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at another diode laser and today it is the Sculptfun S10. They've provided this laser for us to look at. So if that's something you're interested in, stay tuned. We are gonna jump right into it. All right, as I said, we are taking a look at the Sculptfun S10. Uh, this is a 10 watt laser and they did provide this to me at no charge uh, so that I could do a review. However, they're not sponsoring this video. They're not paying me in any other way. I'm not an affiliate of theirs. Uh, they just provided the laser for me to um, give you an overview of my thoughts on it. So uh, that's what we're gonna do today. So let's jump into some of the details. Uh, at the time of this video, uh, the laser sells for $479. Now that's the base unit. There are sometimes packages that include other things and uh, we'll go over some of those things that I might uh, recommend uh, later at the end of this video. This is a 10 watt optical output laser and that's an important thing to know when looking at lasers. A lot of times they're rating the input wattage. So for example, this one is I think 36 input wattage and some sellers will market their laser as a 36 watt laser. Well, you really wanna know what that optical output is. So in this one, it is a 10 watt optical output. It has a working area of 400 millimeters square and that's uh, the default one. However, they do offer an extended rail upgrade kit that takes your Y axis to 950. Uh, we're not looking at that today, um, but that is an option with this laser as well. The laser point is a highly focused point. It's a 0.08 millimeter square and having that square focus point is really nice, especially if you're doing a lot of cutting of parts that you want interlocking. This laser does include an air assist nozzle and they say that it's been designed to uh, increase the air pressure uh, through fluid dynamics. Um, now, looking at it, I can't tell you necessarily what they did or didn't do to do that. Um, we're just gonna test it for its effectiveness. But it is nice that it's kind of integrated into the design of the laser. Air assist is one of the things that if you're cutting, um, it's really gonna be important that you have an air assist on your laser. So if you're looking at one today and with all the options out there, uh, I would make sure that it's included or at least an inexpensive option for the laser that you are looking at. Uh, this one does have an adjustable acrylic eye shield. Now this is nice. Now all, all the lasers should have some sort of shielding around the head. Now whether you use that or not is up to you and you should always keep your eyes safe. They do include some glasses, but I always, always make sure that you have ones that fit you well and there you are sure they are rated for the laser you're looking at. This laser is compatible with laser GRBL and Lightburn. Those are the two popular softwares that you're gonna use with this. Um, I myself use Lightburn. I've been using it on my CO2 laser for years and I've been using them on the diode lasers for over the past year as well. This laser, uh, for what we're looking at, um, it can cut a lot of hardwoods, softwoods, uh, some MDFs, some acrylics, cardboard, leather, and cardstock. And there are a few other natural materials you might be able to use, but it's really important to understand what you shouldn't cut with this. There are certain plastics that contain vinyl and that creates chloride gas. You should never cut engrave those at all. Uh, other metals that it can engrave are stainless steel and aluminum if it's got a coating on it or if it's anodized, um, but you're not gonna be cutting any metals with it, you can engrave those. All right, first let's talk about the build. Now I'm not gonna go into a full in-depth build video on this. Uh, overall, the build went fairly well. I didn't run into any issues, but I am gonna point out a few features and uh, just a few things for you to think about when you're building to help you be successful with yours. First and foremost, the parts came well packaged. Uh, they were all secure. Uh, a lot of the, all the hardware bags were labeled individually. So step-by-step step, you knew which one you needed to use. As a matter of fact, I have a couple of left over because they also include a spare parts bag. So this has uh, just some of the common screws that might need. So you never know, one may have been, uh, it might've been a bad production run on one of the pieces of hardware or more often than not, you're building it and a uh, screw falls off the table, rolls who knows where and uh, you know, never to be seen again. So it's nice that they include a few spares. And then the other part is labeled laser repair tools. And what these are, are O-rings and set screws that help. Um, you can use them to reseal your uh, air nozzle if that was to go bad. They also provide all the tools. So they give you this Allen key. Um, this one, uh, obviously you can really torque down really well, but uh, be careful not to over torque anything on this. This is just, you know, steel screws going into aluminum and those screws will uh, strip out that, that aluminum if you're not careful. So you do wanna get things snugged up pretty well. Um, you know, make them tight, but don't over tighten them. And then they give you two smaller Allen keys. Um, these are great. These are work well for the build. Um, but one thing I find useful is to have a set of these kind of longer um, straight Allen keys, Allen tools. And so these have kind of just a sharp end. Um, they're straight. They're great for getting uh, hardware into tight places um, where it's straight on and, and maybe you can't get that uh, 
you know, this, this head keeps hitting the side. Um, so this set itself is no longer available, but I will link to another one. It's not needed, but something that you might appreciate in this and other builds in your workshop. So to guide you through the build, they do provide uh, a decent manual and it is uh, translated fairly well. They do a good job of showing detailed photos along with arrows and uh, explaining exactly each piece of hardware needed. Um, so um, if you can't find what you're looking for in this manual, um, you can reach out to Sculpt Fund or even just leave a comment down below. I will do my best to help you with your build if you're getting stuck, should you get one of these lasers yourself. And all the parts did go together fairly well, fairly easily. Um, I did not have any problems. It took me about half an hour to put this one together. Um, you know, I've, I've built a number of these lasers, so I've got some experience with it. I'm also uh, I was trying to take some video in case they did run into any issues, which I did not. Uh, so um, it, it's not uh, something that should take forever, um, but just take your time, read the manual, and uh, you know, reach out to the community if you need some help. The control panel is right up front. It has your USB, your power, your on-off switch. Um, that's good and all. Um, the wires do stick up a little bit, but they generally kind of get out of your way. Um, they do provide some nice mounting points. They provide some Velcro for and uh, some hoops to run the air hose and your cables. And then they have a little uh, spots to actually fasten down the cables to the gantry to provide some cable management. Uh, cable management on these open frame lasers is always something that leaves a little bit to be desired because they have this side piece that needs to go somewhere. Um, but they did seem to try to eliminate a lot of the extra cabling going to an extra stepper motor that would move out here. Uh, and the rest of it is all in this nice um, snakeskin cable management. Having the X-axis X -axis gantry motor mounted on this side does help reduce the moving weight on this gantry and fewer wires that need to transfer through here. So that's part of what's helping them with some of their precision. And then also this linear rail, that is something you generally would only see on faster CO2 lasers. And uh, they do provide a lot of extra stability from being torqued. And they generally, when kept oiled well and maintained, uh, do provide very precise movement. As I mentioned earlier, it has this adjustable shroud that uh, can kind of get out of your way a little bit when you're needing to check the end of the laser, maybe do your uh, framing and such. Um, and it does have some up and down movement. And so that's kind of nice as you're working with your laser and you're trying to maybe work with some uneven materials um, that'll give you a little extra um, distance from the material so that it's not getting in the way. Um, the other thing I noticed is that the air hose that is provided with this is larger than your, I've seen on other lasers. So you technically could probably move a little extra volume through there. Do you have a little concern that if you didn't route this just right, it could start pinching. So just be aware of that. Um, try to make sure that it isn't folding over on itself and restricting your airflow that way. But they give you plenty of length to attach it to your air compressor or air pump. Um, that's about it on the build. Let's jump into some tests and see how this laser does. All right, so as you can see, I've got the uh, laser here in the scope fund enclosure, which um, they do make a pretty good pair. Um, and if you're doing any cutting with this inside, you really want to use it in an enclosure. So I've got it vented out, uh, out through a uh, four inch hose and that keeps all the smoke and debris from collecting in the room and, and becoming a hazard. Also having that positive air flow moving across your laser helps keep the laser cleaner as itself. So um, that's something to look at. I've actually done a review on this enclosure as well. I'll have that linked uh, down below in case you're interested in checking this out for yourself. But the first thing we do in one of these is we always check. Uh, we do, I run a, a test card. And so this is one of many I've used. This one is actually an adaptation from Louisiana Hobby Guy. So I'll link to him as well if you're, you're interested in him. He's got a wealth of knowledge about using Lightburn and these lasers. I actually ran a speed grid from within Lightburn. And so this is the one without air assist. And you can see that it did cut through at 325 at 100% power. Now, some people don't want to necessarily run their lasers at 100% power. Um, there's, you know, people say that um, you're going to burn it out faster. Um, if it's from a reputable company and they've balanced this thing well, you should be able to run it at 100% power without a lot of degradation of its lifespan. But um, what we really want to know is how well does this run with air assist? So here's the one with the air assist. And you can see even at 80% power up in that 300 range we're still cutting through so um, that's where the air assist really shines next what we want to do is we want to test how well does this cut 
through thicker materials. Now they claim that it can go through quarter inch material in one pass, depending on if it's plywood or hardwood, and then thicker materials with multiple passes. I'm gonna throw a few different sizes and types of materials in here next. We're gonna see how well they cut and uh, give you some idea. Now I've taken the shroud off just to make it easier to see what's going on here. I don't necessarily recommend you do that for your setup. Um, you want to be mindful of your eyes. Anybody else that comes into this room, I've got the door shut. No one else is going to come in here. I'm going to put my safety glasses on and we'll do some testing that way. But be safe. Um, don't necessarily do everything you see on videos without understanding the why and the what they're doing to protect themselves. All right, so I've got some quarter inch. Uh, this is quarter inch uh, Baltic birch. And we are going to try to cut this. Now, Sculpfin says that quarter inch plywood should be done at four millimeters a second, one pass. Now, I've also lowered this down about uh, an eighth inch, so half the distance to try to get the focal point right in the center of that wood. So we are going to see if we can get a circle to drop. And I'm going to be using air assist. I'm going to have the air extraction on. So we're going to turn all that on now. And... Um, you're gonna see how this does. So I've got it set to four millimeters a second, one pass, 100% power. Let's see what it does. Yes. I've got the shroud off just so it's easier to see what's going on here. But um, okay, that was one pass, didn't go. Let's just go ahead and run it again for second pass. So maybe it's getting through more of it, but not necessarily all of it. There's two passes. Let's try a third. This one may be the ticket. Oh, yep. Looks like it did drop down. Turn our air pump off. So, there you go. It's a fairly clean cut. And there is this little burn mark on the start and stop part, but, you know, slides in fairly clean. So, maybe not one pass, but it does do quarter inch Baltic birch in uh, three passes. And clean enough, I think that's a, definitely a usable cut. So, let's try uh, non plywood material, see what it does. All right, so I've got this piece. This is maple. It's a little softer. And um, I'm going to set this over here, and we're going to run that just the same. We'll see how many passes it takes. We're going to turn the air pump on. Don't believe it went through on that one. Let's try running it again. Growing cross grains probably the hardest part, so top and bottom it might be struggling, but let's see. Nope. Let's try a third one. Looks like it cut out. So here again, we got three passes. Drop the clean out. Backside, front side. And you can see the edge of the cut. Some caramelization, but nothing like really charred. Um, and it fits back in. So um, I'd, I'd call that successful. You can definitely cut quarter inch material with this. Um, not terrible, terribly slow. Um, but if it was a really big piece, you know, obviously this would take some time. All right, so we did some more of those uh, thicker material to cut tests and quarter inch material, very feasible. Um, it's not going to be fast, but you can do it. So, you know, if it was something that you were doing an occasional project or you're not worried about time, definitely something uh, possible. Um, the plywood for half inch, uh, it just wasn't cutting through and I wasn't going to really be able to lower that any lower. Um, but softer wood like this cedar, it did cut through. So, um, those are some options as far as cutting. Now, this machine really excels more at some of the smaller woods. I tend to stick to eighth inch Baltic birch, um, eighth inch balsa, um, you know, um, your basswoods. Um, those are really the materials this shines at uh, for both cutting and engraving. 
So let's take a look at a few of the projects I did. Um, this is a tool where it's kind of fun. You can make various gifts. And this was a special request from a, an employee of mine at work. Um, they wanted a coaster um, of a marigold. And so I found a clip art um, through a library online, was able to use the image trace function in Lightburn and was able to cut this out. All right, so as you can see, um, pretty good detail on that engraving and then the cut right along the outline edge as well. Um, so this is roughly a four inch. It's a, could be a wall hanging, could be a coaster, um, but performed that quite well. Along with that, you know, engraving, I don't do a lot of photo engravings, but you know, here are just a couple I messed with. Here's a photo I took years ago, a state park near here. It's an old bridge that was put up by the Civil Conservation Corps. Uh, and and uh, so it, it can do some engraving. And then of course, for us uh, sci-fi, Geeks, here is a stormtrooper, and um, you know, so you can see definitely you can get the gradient of colors. Uh, and photo engraving is something that takes a lot of trial and error to get um, your settings right. Um, and so, as I learn more about that, I hope to be able to share some of my experience with that. Uh, I picked up a number of these slate coasters uh, online, and um, just this is a lot of people like to darken this and get a higher contrast. I like the more natural look of this. So this is straight off the laser. Neither of it's treated, um, but you can treat this with a clear coat either before or after and get a little more of a glossy and wet look. Um, and so this is just uh, 507, our area code here in Minnesota, kind of like in the state highway plate. But uh, as you can hopefully see here, um, pretty good detail on the engraving, pretty crisp lines. And uh, we used a flood fill on this. So that is an option you can play around with. Instead of going back and forth the whole way, it will jump around and just do the vectors as it sees fit. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. Um, but uh, here I'll be showing you a little bit of footage of that jumping around and doing that. And uh, it's just another opportunity to try to uh, make your engravings more efficient. Continuing on with the engraving features, um, ceramic tile. So there's a method called the Norton White Tile Method, and um, that's where you paint it first. Now this is takes a little more uh, trial and error, both with your type of paint and your power and speed. This one came out a little more gray than I'd like, um, but you can definitely get this darker blacks um, by using some uh, fairly inexpensive materials around here. And so what this is, is this is a patent drawing for an early biplane. And uh, patent drawings are one of those things that are public domain. So you can go around and make some creative crafts and. Um, features such as this. So um, you paint the tile on, the paint interacts with the uh, laser, and that etches, permanently etches your coaster as well. Now, not only can we just do flat engravings and such, but we can do three dimensional things. And so tis the season, we've got holidays coming up, we've got Halloween as well as Christmas coming. And so I took the design of a few things, added a tea light candle and made this interlocking box. You can see there's tabs on the top and there's tabs on the bottom. And then on the inside, it's just a little LED tea light candle. And then what I did was I cut some uh, tracing paper to act as kind of gels or diffusers for the inside there. And then that makes this glow quite well. I did a whole video on this if you are interested in this project as well on how I put that together and uh, I will link that down below. You can also use this on other materials such as cardstock. And so this is a layered Halloween card. Uh, so the orange card is on bottom. It's just the back all there. And what I did was I laser cut out all the black parts. And so you can see um, there's some pretty fine detail in there. That's where having that 0 0.01 millimeter um, resolution helps out. And uh, then this is just glued on top of each other. So um, your imagination is what's limiting you here. Um, you can engrave things, you can cut them out, um, you have a lot of fun with them. Just be mindful of the materials you are using. Um, you don't want to use anything that's going to create some hazards, whether it be excessive flammability or um, any off-gassing that can be poisonous. So make sure you understand the materials that you are lasering and that they are not creating any harmful byproducts for you. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful or educational. Um, and if you're looking at one of these, I hope it has helped you in some way or another make up your mind. If you have any questions about this laser or anything else in my workshop, please go ahead and leave a comment, reach out to me. I do try to get back to those as best I can. And uh, it's always good to hear what people think of the content I'm putting out there. So I will have affiliate links down to many of the products used in here um, for you to explore. And those links do give me a little bit of kickback at no cost to you. So I appreciate you using them. It does help this channel and help me produce more content for you. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to be playing with more equipment and more projects. And so if you are enjoying what you're seeing here, um, hit that like button and consider subscribing so you don't miss out on my next video. 
I appreciate the community and everything that others have done for me. I'm trying to give back to these videos as well. So uh, in the meantime, um, I hope you get out into your workshop and you get the chance to make something yourself. And we'll see you next time.